We're doing fantastic. Yeah, Welcome we're... back to the show. Zana! Give me a hell yeah. Yes! So I love to do a follow-up. A, a follow-up interview with some of our, our more favorite guests in the world. And you are one of our more favorite guests, I would say. First of all, congratulations on the album coming out in February. I'm very excited about it. I would like to play the album preview teaser here in a couple of minutes so we can kind of just hear bits and pieces of what's coming. But for those that may not know, know you, Zana, how have you been? Where are you at in the moment? And uh, drop any social media links, plugs, promotions, whatever you want to do. Yeah, what's up, you guys? It's me, Zana. Thank you so much for having me out again, you guys. It's awesome to be on this one. Uh, yeah, my name is Zana. I'm a solo rock artist. For you guys who don't know, um, I've been operating since about 2017, and my new sophomore album called Stronger Than Death is about to come out. Very exciting. Uh, it drops February 10th, uh, and you can just go on ZanaOfficial.com to uh, pre-save it or order it, uh, physical copies or uh, digital, bu or, I'm sorry, physical bundles. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Hell yeah. How long have you been sitting on the, the finished copy of the album? I know it's all about promotion and marketing and stuff like that. How long have you been sitting on it before you can, uh, uh, you're allowed to say when the release date is? Oh, so I wrapped up. The last song I recorded uh, for this album was finished November of 2020. And my producer for the album is actually Kellen McGregor of, of Memphis Mayfire. So it took him a while to give me um, my masters because... He, at the same time, Memphis was coming out with their own album. So he was getting a lot of work as well. So I I'm, I finally got them in October of this year. And we had been sitting on a while for him just to see if like a, a, a particular label was going to be interested or pick it up. Uh, they did not, which it's kind of a blessing in disguise now, I think. But um, yeah, it, we, we've been finished with these songs since the end of 2020 and just got mastered back because of all that business stuff happening. <laughs> I was just telling Michaela before we actually went live today, I was like, Michaela, you don't understand. Like, I was checking out the album teaser. The production on this album is what bands want. They strive for this production quality. It's that freaking good. Um, yes. Hell yeah, shout out to Kellen, by the way. Uh, Michaela, do you have a question for Zana before we dive in and check out some tunes real quick? Yeah, what has been like looking back on 2022, like, what has been your favorite show so far this year? that you've been a part of yeah oh my gosh so i really didn't do that many shows this year i just had like a 10-day run in july um because you know i think touring actually just started coming back around february of 2020 uh so it was really hard to book which it's still hard to book you don't really it's kind of like, there's so much recovering right now and bigger bands always get priority so i only did like a small 10-day run and uh it was up to montana we had a, a really big anchor day in montana and and i loved all the shows around it uh there's some interesting places you play uh to on route to get to your main anchor day right um and and, and I think the whole tour was amazing because I, I had been through this huge depression like before the tour and then when i went back on tour i was like reminded why i do this so montana uh it was called crown of thorns fest up there and i just love north the north uh, so it was awesome to be. They put us in a really cool hotel, and I got to meet so many people and meet fans at that festival. So it was great. It sounds like like a heavily metal based festival. Is that what that was? Crown of Thorns it's, festival. It's not. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a rock festival, but um, it was a Christian event, and I am a Christian artist. I do both. I do non Christian and Christian events. I play everything, anything, uh, just because I just love people wherever they, whatever walk of life they come from. Uh, but essentially, uh, it was a yes. rock festival, but it was huge. It was like actually in Pioneer Park, which is a huge public park in Billings, Montana. So there was a private invest investor, I believe, that just made it really great all around for everyone. Okay, well, let's show everybody now why they should pre save the album. Stronger Than Death, coming out February 10th of next year. I'm going to play the whole, the whole, so this is going to be about three minutes right here because I think it's worth letting them hear all the songs on the sample, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Let's do it. Yes. I'm really excited. First of all, this first song, I need a video for this first one. <laughs> 
You guys are gonna be impressed. Check this out. So good. Speaking of this one, uh, this one you dropped on Space on Travel, correct? Uh, I want to yeah, say, I, I think you have more views than almost any artist I've ever seen on there. It's like nearing like 350, 400,000 views on that channel. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, it's, not, it's still, it's about to hit 200,000, but it was weird, man. Like, I think it was just all the growing brands that caught people's eyes so i was like i'm not complaining yeah no that's that's awesome exposure and i, I swear the other day i'm on tiktok and i don't use tiktok very often but I, i'm looking for a song to put in a video and it auto suggested your song did you set up some kind of advertising through tiktok no that's funny you say that because that actually happened to me with one of my friends songs she's uh, her name is brooke robertson she's a contemporary christian artist and it was suggesting her song for me to do reels and i was like is that a paid promotion that she did and i i, I guess it's not because you're telling me you got it too from they my just song. they just that's know weird. i jam you all the time that's what it, they just know yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's totally worth the wait, for real. Son of all the songs on Stronger Than Death, which one was the hardest to, to finish for you? Um, that's a that's a great question. I, I'm pretty fast at writing. Nothing is very much a challenge, really, uh, when it comes to writing. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I guess there was a couple of hangups I got. It's actually on the first one you like, Death at Dawn. I was like, okay, I, I the chorus lyrics were suggested by Kellen, and I was like, I don't know if I really resonate with this. Um, like I I like them, but like I don't know how to make it personal to me. So there was a, I remember there was a point of like, okay, this could go like three different ways lyrically as a concept. I ended up landing on basically like how death at dawn basically means death is coming for you at any moment. So you have to live life to the fullest. And with my history and like almost dying from kidney failure, like that was very much relevant to me. At the time I was newly independent and I was like, dude, I gotta, I gotta like do this with all my heart because I may not live, you know? So that one was like a different couple directions I could have gone with it. Uh, the, probably the next one that was the hardest, that's the last track on the album, if you haven't hit yet. I don't know if you want me to wait, or should I just go ahead and... Is that, is that Prayers in the Dark? No, the, the last one is called Anything But Destiny. That's the song. Okay. It's like a ballad. It's like a pop ballad, kind of. We'll get there in a second. I do yeah. really like Prayers in the Dark also. That's another one of my face. I just, Yeah, that's a slapper right there. This is a really well done, like, album teaser video, too. Yes. And that's this is the current single, correct? Yes, how, that's right. How did you link up with Nestem? Uh, he's my husband, actually. <laughs> oh, well, it's, there it is. I didn't know, but that works out well for features, I suppose. <laughs> awesome. We're both making money. You got you come on my 
my song. I'm going to go on your song. It all comes back to us anyway. So. I totally dig it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> And that's the one you were saying was also fairly hard to do, as far as. Well, it's because that's technically that song is the first one I ever wrote for my record ever, and it was actually like back in 2014 I wrote it. So I, wow. I wrote the bridge of that first, and I had no verses. Oh, sorry, it's a bridge in the chorus. I had no verses for it, and I really thought that the lyrical subject was very appropriate for this album, but I didn't have, like, the verses. And so, um, you know, when you just have a song for that long, you're so afraid of messing it up. You're like, what do I really want to say? You know, you overthink it. Uh, so that one, eventually I got to it with my um, with my co-writer, Josiah Prince. He co-wrote that one with me, and uh, he was drawing out a lot of um, kind of a lyrical style, not super... So, um, yeah, that one was a little difficult because there was so much pressure for me to make it perfect because I'd been sitting on it for so long. I gotcha. And it's, it's kind of ironic that it's the last song on there, too. And it's the old. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we, follow ups are just a little bit of a shorter interview. So I only have a couple more questions for you. But uh, one of those questions is once the album comes out February 10th, what what is the plan after that? Yeah, um, the plan, it's kind of weird. I, I, I've never been in this situation. I don't I don't have any tour dates for next year. Um, there's just not, I'm kind of holding out for a really good one. Um, and honestly, it, it, touring is such a conundrum because it's still recovering. And, you, you know, I'm coming up to the age where, like, I can't be touring for free or door splits anymore. Uh, so I'm kind of holding out for a good tour. Um, and if not, if no tours happen, I'm, I'm really okay with just building up online presence. My TikTok needs a lot of help. And I'm, like, 30, so, like, I hate it. But I know I have to do it. Uh, so I <laughs> totally agree. Kind of there is no plan like it's just it's it's incredible the the way this album came out and i'm so grateful that it's even happening because there was so many things stopping it or trying to uh but yeah just holding out so i'm just going to be building online presence after this and trying to get this album in the hands of as many people as i can excellent hell yeah well we we look forward to the release michaela sends on out on one more final question what do you got um, I usually ask all our guests this um, all time favorite album if you had to pick one. Oh no, that's too hard. Um, it is hard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have a top 10 I could list for you. Yeah, you read off a bunch that, yeah, that you're really yeah, digging. Exactly. Just in, okay. the, in the realm, just to get an idea oh of gosh. like where your, your eclectic music taste lies. Okay. It's <laughs> old school i guess it's all like 2010s and 2008 because i'm you know again like 30 so all my music case is still back in that day uh but i would say like top albums are like um seosin self-titled you have amberlin cities may the everglow you have under oath they're only chasing safety you have um you know like the, the golden era of emo you know like and then yes. i also love um, Dead Poetic, the... Wow, uh, I haven't heard them in forever. Album, really white album. What is that album called? Dead Medicine. Yes, Medicine. Dead Medicine. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. album is so good. Uh, more recently, though, like... Oh, of course, like... New Medicine. Flyleaf albums. You have Flyleaf self-titled. You have uh, New Horizons. I love it by Flyleaf. It's such a beautiful album. Um, and then I love um, The Spirit Box. Eternal Blue is more recent. I love the uh, 1OK Rock Ambitions and uh, Luxury Diseases, the new one that just came out. I'm still digging into it. Love it, though. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, I don't know. I have to look at, like, my history real quick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was Florida, awesome. The Lord Claude of Plagues and Roots Above, you, those are staples of seeing kids. You cannot overlook those. It's true. Hell <laughs> um, yeah. There's a few for you guys. <laughs> 
that's that's a ton. That's awesome. Some good ones in there. Awesome. I might have to play New Medicine right after this. I haven't heard Do Dead Poetic. I saw them live a l many years ago in like a small club, and I never heard from them ever again. But I bought their album right then and there that night. It was um, that good. Oh, you, yeah. You need to play. My favorite track on that album is is Dream Club Murders. It's the second one. I love the drums on that song. Like the but all the albums incredible. It's great. Good stuff. Well, Zana, we wish you nothing but success. We're excited about the album. Please make a music video for that first that first track, Death Death Above Law. Is Death what? at Dawn. What is it? Death at... Death at Dawn. Okay, okay. Dead and Gone. There we go. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you so much. At Zana, or ZanaOfficial.com. Go grab some merch. Pre-order, save the album. Whatever you can do, that'd be awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Zana! Give me a hell yeah! Thank you so much. Bye-bye.